Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. As you know, I'm always playing around with batteries, all kinds of batteries. And recently, I have gotten these very cool batteries. These right here are C-Max batteries. They're made by Panasonic and they're five amp powers. The thing that makes these special is the fact that they can put out a lot of power. They are rated somewhere around 10 to 20 Cs. We're gonna test that today. And so these are very cool. A lot of you guys are excited about them and a lot of you guys are buying them. I have a large supply of these coming in. These are brand new. That's the cool thing about these, that they are unused. For some reason, these were destined to some application that didn't happen. And as a result of that, then uh, we are getting over 100,000 of these cells, or so I'm told, right? I'm, I'm, I've just got the first like 5,000 of these, but supposedly about 10,000 to 20,000 of these a week, we're gonna be getting them for a while. Um, and so that's the very cool thing. And a lot of you guys seem to know what these are and are buying them almost as soon as, as fast as we can post them, right? And process them. The bad thing is that they're kind of weird to work with because look, they're kind of small. Like here's my hand. You have to figure out how to put these together. Like you got to drill, like put bus bars and drill holes on copper bars or aluminum or something, right? Or you do like me and you just use and design a couple of circuit boards like this and then it, it makes it uh, like 10 times easier to assemble these so this is a complete battery pack here you could have 10 of these and you can parallel these and you or you can use them as is standalone or you can put them in a bigger array so let's take a look at what it would take to design this system here and so you can put one of these together okay so here we go after measuring the cells then i drew this right and it's very simple here i'm gonna explain it right so you put the positive on one side and then you just go zigzag right positive the negative positive the negative positive negative positive and you just zigzag all the way across the entire 14 cells and then you get the negative post over here these right here are for terminals, right? So you can put like um, four millimeter terminals right here. M4 metallic bases, right? And so you could use two cables in here because this obviously is capable of doing up to like 100 amps. Uh, and then you just get all the balance leads to go down into two of these cables or these connectors. And the reason why I use two connectors instead of one is because I already use this connector for a bunch of other of the boards that I do. This is the most positive, and then this is the most negative on that side. That's all you have to know, right? And so it goes, you know, first cell in between the first two pins and second cell in between the third and fourth pins and so on and so on, right? So another thing here, uh, you can toggle between the layers and this is the top layer, the red one's top, and then the the blue is the bottom. And then a thing that I did here was added this silk layer. So this is paint. And of course, all of these are paint. I also added these, the plus and minuses on the bottom, because when we're assembling, you'll get to see that this is very, very helpful because it's very easy to make a mistake and put the cells backwards, right? And in order to be, you know, not second guessing yourself, then if you, you have these markings on the bottom side, then it's gonna be much easier for that. Now let's look at the other board is gonna be the BMS board. Here we go, the BMS board is the same thing. The BMS board is the same layout, physical layout. And so these holes right here are what's going to transfer the energy or the power from the first board into this one, right? So so here's, you know, you have to make these pads as, as large as you can and then go. Uh, so here, Obviously, you don't get to see where they connect because it's on the second layer. But here we go. Here's the, the second layer is the one that carries most of the power. And positive and negative, right? Uh, and then I have, you have the choice of, you know, using an XT90 connector here or just these 10 gauge uh, silicon wires in here. It's, it's pretty simple circuit here, right? And then this is the top. 
This is where we're gonna connect the BMS uh, balance leads into the actual BMS. You know, I designed it so that you can use two BMS boards in here. And the ones that I chose are like, you know, some that are inexpensive and they're very popular so that you know, availability is not a problem. But these are 14S, uh, 60 amp BMS modules that have separate ports for charging and discharging. And so there we go. This is the BMS. This is how you kind of design the whole thing. You make a Gerber. This is a, a free software that you can get online. There's a bunch of them, uh, different ones. You can pick any of them and then just design your board uh, this way. And then now let's put it together and let me show you how it is. We're gonna order this from PCB Way because it's a sponsor of this video. All right, so now that we have the boards, uh, PCB Way did a good job making them. Uh, this is the bus bar board, doesn't require a lot. All it requires, it's these uh, M4 little, what are these called, terminal, terminals, M4 terminals. Um, so you just have to solder six of these in here and then the two connectors, right? So that's really easy, let's set that aside. Let's put together the BMS board, that one. It's a little bit more complex, but not really that much, as you will see. Okay, next what we have to do is now start populating the bus bar uh, PCB, right? And it's very simple. You just put the little studs through the holes. Uh, you have to make sure you match the positive with the positive sign and the negative with the negative sign. And then you just start stacking them. And then you're gonna use the five millimeter nuts to go in there. You have to be very careful and not short those out because those screws are close together and so you just have to make sure that you don't touch. Now, in this other angle, you can see that we're using a separator. This is a plastic little separator that comes with the first batch of these batteries that we got, they didn't have them, but I, I'm told that from here on out, uh, they are going to come with those little separators and so we're just going to include those when you buy these. And so if you're someone that bought these early on and didn't have them, then you're gonna have to figure out what to put in between them. Just, you know, like a piece of cardboard or a piece of plastic or something just so that you can keep those cells separated. Um, uh, so this is the one short out because the, uh, the, the shrink wrap that's around these is, is very, very thin. So you just have to make sure that. And here's the part where uh, it becomes very apparent or very useful to have the plus and minus signs because you load them up from the bottom. And so you gotta make sure that you gotta orient it the right way, right? And then once you put them out there, then you screw them. You just gotta do this until you populate the entire thing. These have, they're not 100% isolated. They have some kind of electrical charge. Not exactly negative, not exactly positive, but there's some leakage on these cells that, yeah, kind of worry me a, a bit. So I don't, wouldn't want to uh, let those touch anything conductive on the bottom. So I'd like to isolate them by putting a piece of paper down here. So the next step is, now we're gonna put the standoffs. So here we go. It's gonna be a little bit tight because this is where all the power is gonna go through. Finally, now we mount our BMS board. Four M4 screws. And then tighten these ones. And then finally, the last thing is to put the two little ribbon cables. Mm -hmm. 
and that is our battery pack now let's test this i'm testing it i'm using these grid tie inverters to remove the energy and we're doing uh we're nearing uh, 50 amps right so 46 as the voltage lowers then the amperage goes up a little bit so that's about the maximum that these uh bms things will will do i want to check right now to s the the thermal camera to see how this is behaving and if it does well if nothing gets too hot then i will install this one i will finish installing right now it's not 100 percent connected so all the energy is going through this one right here and it's just barely getting warm i that's the, the thing with this this battery is so small Right, but it could give out so much energy, I think, that, uh, well, it only lasts a few minutes uh, when you're doing this sort of uh, speeds, right? This rate, this is 2,000 watts right now, 960, 960 watts. So a total of 2,000 watts, oh, 2.3 according to this thing right here. Yeah, look at that. Those cables right there are the ones that are getting the hottest. 50c but even at that see it's not that hot there let's get closer uh what is this this is the cave this is the connector xt90 connector and then the actual board itself oh well that trace right there is hot and then uh the connector right here is the XT60 connector, no, the XT90 connector. Yeah, so that's where the bottleneck is gonna be at, right? But at 50C, this is this is nothing. This is uh, it's, it's it's hot, it's warm, but it's not really hot, and that's where the uh, it removes the energy. Let's check out the the cells themselves. Yeah, the cells, they're like nothing. Oh, let's check out. These are actually the standoffs. They're, they're cool. The standoffs are cool. Oh, no, wait. What happened? Oh, that's it. That is it. All right, here we go. Now, three of these. Ooh. 62 amps. There we go, 62 amps. So that's like 12C or 3000 watts stuff. So now it's got two BMSs, so they should be able to handle 100 amps, no problem. Uh, you know, let's look at the thermal imager. Okay, here we go. So there's a hot spot right there on that BMS. Huh, that's interesting. But not on that one. Well, there is one over there. What's the other hot spot over here? The connectors. But now it's got two connectors, so the wires hopefully are not gonna get too hot. 68 amps. Um, 3.8 amp hours off of the batteries out of a total of five so we're nearing uh almost half the battery let's see what those cells are doing yeah these cells are are doing okay 34 so obviously this test is not gonna last too long because well, these are five amp hour cells, right? And so we're pushing them at, uh, we're pushing at 70 amps. That's really, really, really high. 12, what is that? 50 amps is 10. 20C? Oh my God, we might be pushing these cells way too much, right? So 70 is what, like 15C, something like that? 15 times their capacity. So these, yeah, these, this is high power output cells okay here we go the the bms turned off already that's it we remove uh 4.3 amp hours off of the pack but the uh, load is so high that the the cells 
sag so much that the BMS has stepped in and stopped the discharge here. So there we go. What are the cells at? Oh, no way. Are they really at 30 degrees? What's my hand? Let's see. 29 degrees. The cells are at 30 degrees. Yeah, these cells are 70 amps. They gave it and they, they just got warm. They got body temperature warm, basically. The, uh, the circuit boards here are fine. This one are like 40, right? Which is what, like 80 degrees Fahrenheit? That's nothing. That's just, you know, kind of a hot day temperature level, you know? Yeah, all the traces on the boards are just warm. The, uh, those standoffs are pretty cool. Look at that. They're cool. 24. That's, those two standoffs were doing um, 70 amps for, you know, seven minutes or so that this test took. And, uh, yeah, no, uh, no heat whatsoever. These standoffs are pretty amazing. Here we go. BMSs are, are cool. The connector there, uh, you know, they were running around 45 degrees, as I remember, on this side right here. This is the part of the board where the traces are the smallest due to the... Yeah, this is, this is cool. You could totally run these batteries at 15C, no problem. Uh, these might be 20C cells. I don't know. Yep, these are 20, 25C cells. The temperature readings support that. You should be able to run those safely at those power levels. Now, I'm going to make this project open source, which means that I'm going to upload this file to PCBWay and their website, and you should be able to go and download it and then print it yourself at PCBWay and then populate them yourself. I'm going to give you all the links to all the parts that it takes to make this one battery pack. This is a 48 volt right? Five amp hour pack capable of 20, 25 C's. There you go. I want to thank PCB for sponsoring this video and for making it easy for people like you watching this to be able to order a custom printed PCB, right? I'm also going to eventually offer these at jack35.com, but I have to order all the parts and then get them in. And, you know, once all that stuff settled, then I'll be able to populate them and, uh, offer them fully made but since that takes some time for now the easiest cheapest ways for you to get one of these things going is to just order it yourself and build it yourself right so thank you for watching this video we'll see you on the next one bye